purposes, they should have spent less money because they weren't earning money. The government made the mistake of sending everybody stimulus money so they can go out and spend money to buy products that didn't even exist because they weren't created. That's why we have a supply shortage, because everybody is spending money that the Fed printed, not money that they earned producing goods and providing services. So it's a double whammy. Prices are going ballistic. And this year is going to be worse than last. So the whole thing is a lie. The truth is, if the Fed actually raised interest rates high enough to fight inflation, it would crush the economy. We'd have a worse financial crisis than 2008. Stock market would crash, bond market, real estate market. Government would have to slash spending because interest rates would skyrocket. And so to prevent that from happening, the Fed is going to not fight inflation. And that's why it's going to get so much worse. But this is a problem that the government created. And, this, and we just live in this kind of artificial fake little world where everything seems fine and they, they've created this kind of th this fake world where everything the economy seems healthy and, and they've built well, all this for for political reasons right so that they can yeah, win elections seems, yeah until you look beneath the surface yeah. it seems healthy we have record trade deficits record budget deficits we're bleeding red ink we're living in a gigantic bubble and now we're starting to see that because prices are really starting to rise cereal peanut butter at the Loaves and Fishes Food Pantry in Los Angeles, Brenda Hakimian says she no longer feels a part of the middle class. There's either extreme rich or extreme poor, and the rest of us just kind of fall through the cracks. All right, Shella Wong, this is a hard one by Nyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. Once they call Halayim, let Yahweh, by Hashem Havashai, by Hashem Havakakodash, my mouth. Double line to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. Shalom to you, Akim, Nakwatim, and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Give me a quick lesson with a little um, background and edification dealing with the topics of hyperinflation and um, the coming famines that's coming here to America or the daughter of Babylon. But you got a lot of people that don't want the prophecies to come to pass. <clears throat> you got a lot of people that want this place to continue. And they're hoping, they're hoping for the scriptures to not be true. But the Lord said what? His words are faithful and true. All right? And man is a liar. You know? So, um... And the scriptures say that the Lord is not a man that he should lie. So what he's saying is true. He warned us of it 2,000 years ago with, with um, through Yahweh Shai, even all up until John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos, letting us know about famine that's coming here, that we're going to be delivered in troublesome times, you know, hyperinflation. Spoke about all of that. John the Revelator saw saw this um, visions. Saw these visions of America going into an economic crash and ultimately being destroyed. So this is Second Ezra 16 and 17. The prophet Ezra um, prophesied this all the way back in the fifth century BC BCE around. Uh, 452 uh, BC. All right, so it says here, Second Ezra 16 and 17. Woe is me, woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? Right, it's gonna be that bad out here. In those days, in the time of Jacob's trouble, when all hell is breaking loose and they're pushing the MOTB. You know. Mr. World War Three, economic collapse, famine. That's gonna be hell for our people, man, even more. But it says what? So Ezra saw this and he saw the condition uh, or the fear that could come with what was about to happen. I was watching a lesson earlier with Apostle Ricard speaking about um, 
scripture where it says uh, it should be as a lion. And you, you run from a lion and you meet a bear. And you, you run from a bear and you lean on the wall thinking you're safe and you run to a snake. That's how bad it's going to be out here, man. Those type of conditions. There going to be no, no sense and feeling of safety. Nothing but danger. And trouble. So we're going to need deliverance in those days. We're going to need faith. So the Lord is already instilling that within us. The spirit of hope and not fear. All right. We said, woe is me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? I mean, there's nobody. No police officer, no ambulance, no person, no family member. Nobody can deliver anybody from what's coming. Except for Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shah. The beginning of sorrows, all right, going into Jacob's trouble. And, the, and great mornings. So great mornings, not just mornings, but great mornings. Mass death. Uh, false flag attacks. The beginning of famine and great death, man, because through famine, you're going to have great death and ultimately plagues. All right, martial law, rioting, violence, the purge. As you know, they just passed the law. It was the Illinois, I think it was. It's basically saying the purge is coming. The beginning of wars. Oh, World War Three. The powers shall stand in fear, man. See? The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? There's going to be nothing anybody can do. That's what Ezra was seeing. The Lord was like, there's no way out. That shit's going to be like um, Final Destination. The, the, the movie. It says what? Behold, famine and plague, man. So famines and diseases, plagues. Lack of food. Through hyperinflation, through... Um, the economy failing, the nation's not trading anymore. You know, weather atrocities, whatever reason. It says famine and plague, tribulation and anguish. Man, it's gonna be a lot of anguish and pain and struggle. Are sent as scourges for amendment, meaning correction. But for all these things they shall not turn from their wickedness nor be always mindful of the scourges right so Jacob two thirds they said, scripture said they're going to bow down their back all the way meaning they're going to sell out and go off all the way to the destruction eat the fruit of their own way behold victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case and that's, that's right now because the evils are growing, you got the plagues, and you do have famine creeping up upon the earth. And it says here that everything is cheap. The victuals, the food, you go to Walmart, get it cheap. You got these fast food restaurants. That they shall think themselves to be in good case, man. So, you know, so people think themselves to be in good case. But the, the heart is deceitful. And even then, see, well, they stuck in that American dream, sleeping. Even then shall evils grow upon the earth. Sword, meaning destruction and war, martial law, um, draconian laws being put into place to, to trap people more, killing, more violence. Famine, all right, through means of uh, economic failure hyperinflation through wars, sanctions, uh, drought, and, and great confusion, man. So it's going to be great confusion. And nobody know what the hell is going on. For many of them that dwell on the earth shall perish of the famine, and the other that escape the, the hunger shall the sword destroy. All right, that, that goes into that scripture I was just talking about. Where it says, um, one shall run from a lion. It can be like running from a lion and running, then a bear meet him. 
then from a bear, then he think he can find some rest, and then a snake, a viper, a snake bites him. That was like running from the famine or making it out of that, and then going straight into hunger as of the martial law or gangs or whatever, malicious. And the dead shall be cast out as dung, and there shall be no man to comfort them, for the earth shall be wasted, and the cities shall be cast down. So there's not going to be any country that come here and help, because they're going to be going through it themselves. There's going to be bodies, dead bodies all over the place. All right? Meaning no person going to be able to, no services are going to be in place to comfort the family, meaning the churches ain't going to be there, your coroner's office, they may have to bury the bodies themselves or just they're going to leave them out there. All right? Uh, they already put that out there. It's going to take longer for police responses. So you might well count that for um, ambulances as well. So these things are coming upon the earth, hyperinflation, which can cause famine. All right, because Esau is going to cause a famine upon the earth. An economic crash, hyperinflation, to control the masses through fear. Revelation 6 and 8, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death, and that's Esau. It's good to say that Habakkuk too. He is as death, man. And as large as his desires is hell. So one of their desires is new world order. And hell followed him, man. So wherever Esau goes and as large as their desires, hell follows behind him. And, meaning sorrow and destruction. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. And if you look it up, not supposed to say the fourth part. They're supposed to say the four parts, which represents north, east, west, and south. I mean, the power was given him over the whole earth. All right? To kill with the sword, that's Esau, to be able to kill with destruction, causing wars, you know, with all kind of technology. And with hunger, through famine, right? And with death, uh, plagues. Martial law, and with the beast of the earth, you know they got that um, um, Planet of the Apes syndrome going around right now, <laughs> and they even got robot animals that they're making to attack people. Teeth of wild beasts, you know. So they even talking about bringing animals back. So yeah. And with the beast of the earth, they can use those to, to create plagues as well. So, um, that's right, the focus is the hunger. All right, so with the mindset of hyperinflation, let's go back to um, the Weimar Republic over in Germany when... Um, they had a situation with hyperinflation, all right? Now, look at the money on the table, all right? This is what they would use it for. This is one person using the money, the dollars, to burn to keep a family warm, <clears throat> all right? Value of one gold mark and paper marks. So, look. Uh, Little children using it to play blocks with. All right, that's hyperinflation. When um, the dollars printed outweigh the economy. I mean, the economy is slowing down, but the dollars print printing are being increased. And that happens when you give out loans and PPP loans and all this madness. All right, but this happened in the Weimar Republic, and I was talking to somebody the other day. He seemed like a very wise person, but when you talk to him, it's like, "Hey, man, you know the dollar about to crash soon and collapse," and he had proof, even banking proof, economic proof, wars, and all this different shit, sanctions, nations moving from the dollar, like Russia and China, 
And it's like, the only thing they can say is, nah, I don't think so. I don't think they can do that. Like, you don't think they can do it? The money, that's what money does, it changes. You know, um, it, the money in the Roman Empire used to be a Daenerys. And the Greek Empire used to be a drachma. So they change, currency changes over time. All right, especially fiat currency. It's made to rise and fall. It's made to do that. It's a pyramid scheme. They usually only last about 70 years or so. But this one lasted way longer. All right, the dollar. Look at that. All right, so that's what America's dollar is going to be worse than this. Look at that. All right, so oh, look at that book. It says, when money dies, the nightmare of deficit spending, devaluation, and hyperinflation in the Weimar Republic, Weimar Germany. So let's see how it happened. All right, it says here, how did the Weimar Republic cause hyperinflation? In order to pay the striking workers, the government simply printed more money. All right. And that's what they've been doing, printing more money. QE1, QE2, QE3, QE4. The scripture say we would have healed Babylon, but she cannot be healed. Take balm for her, but she will not be healed, man. This flood of money led to the hyperinflation as the more money was printed, the more prices rose up. Prices ran out of control. For example, a loaf of bread, which cost 250 marks, which would be about between 50 and $70 in American dollars. All right, so 250 marks, German marks, it we call uh, Deutsch uh, Marks, uh, D-E-M. In January 1923, and that's when America was booming. That's when Queen, uh, the, the devil Elizabeth, was um, starting to come into power. Had risen to 200 million marks in November 1923. So it went from, in one year, by the end of the year, just like they're saying this year it could happen in America, it went from 250 marks from $60 all the way up to 200 million marks, man, meaning like a price of bread, loaf of bread going from $50, which shows you that's high prices as well, from that to almost a hundred something thousand dollars for a loaf of bread. Imagine that, and that's scriptural, man. That's prophetic, because that's what's going to happen here in the daughter of Babylon. The bread costs about $2, $3 now, but when all hell break loose, it's going to go up way higher than people can imagine, just like the gas prices. Let's get some scripture on that. All right, I'm going to use this as a backdrop. Just look in the background. Me, me and my children were looking through um, pictures. Right, dealing with Germany and the Weimar, Weimar Republic. Oh, sorry, but let me get this right. All right, we're dealing with Germany and the Weimar Republic, and as we looking, we see this. Look over here, man, loaf of bread. Because it says one brat. All right, if you look up a brat, a uh, one brat is five zero 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 zero. So fifty thousand marks man so one brat all right so a german brat is um authentic german bread okay barn brat so it means bread crust and brat so all right <clears throat> um so brat is basically loaves of bread okay so now they said a loaf of bread and you see in that picture 
Wow, if you convert 50,000 uh, German um, marks, which their their money, their currency, converted to U.S. dollars, it would be about twenty-five thousand dollars for a loaf of bread. So imagine that man going from three dollars, four dollars for a loaf of bread, and then goes from that to twenty-five thousand, all up to almost a hundred thousand for a loaf of bread, man. That's super hyperinflation. That's what it's gonna be like. All right, so yeah, man, um, let's get this in Revelation 6. You know, we already know this, but this is the spirit right now, man. Hyperinflation, debt, econ economic crash, dollar collapse. All right, um, Revelation 6 and uh, uh, 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts, man. So those four beasts represents what? If you look it up it says living beings or living creatures and these angels are the four beasts meaning creatures or angels living beings they're living but they're not human but they look like humans all right and i heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts what's that voice that voice from the midst is talking about yahweh and yahweh shy really yahweh speaking from um if you read Revelations 4, it shows you a depiction of the Most High sitting on the throne in the midst of the four beasts, the four archangels. All right. Those same four archangels spoken of in Ezekiel chapter 1. So, um, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, man, so you heard a judgment being spoken out that this was going to happen as a prophecy. All right. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, a measure of wheat for a penny, man. So a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. So that's like one loaf of bread or or one or two loaves of of barley bread gonna be costing um a day's wages a penny and back then during the roman empire that during the time this was written a penny would have been a drachma and a drachma was the roman currency but it was also known as a day's wages all right how much you would get paid in a day in america you can get paid depending on your job between a um, hundred dollars a day fifty dollars a day all the way to a hundred thousand dollars a day people get some people get paid that much in one day thousands of dollars all right so a day's wages man on a, on a regular scale would be um you know a lot of people make thousand dollars thousands of dollars in one day so whatever a day's wages is uh it's gonna be expensive for a loaf of bread you know, so I ain't gonna be able to pay for it. You have to make choices either pay for your rent and bills or buy a loaf of bread. A measure of wheat for a penny. So, this is prophecy spoken from that voice in the midst of the angels. And that's talking about Yahweh or Yahweh Shah, right? Which I believe it was Yahweh. A measure of wheat for a penny. And three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine, man. So the, the Lord said he's not going to um, destroy his elect, all right, that bear the, the anointing and that um, with the wisdom. Um, or the wine, meaning the doctrine of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and the testimony. So the Lord said, protect them. That's, that's what the command was given out in the heavens and that goes back to Revelation 1 Re Re Revelation 1 and 1 the revelation of Yahweh Shai see the revealing which Yahweh gave unto him see that to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass and he sent it and signified it by his angel unto his servant John alright 
who bear record of the word of Yahweh and of the testimony of Yahweh Shai and Mashiach and all, all things that he saw. All right, so all the stuff that he was shown and that he saw in real life and that he experienced in his past, he spoke about. All right, and, and what he saw in the visions of things to come. And this was one of them, speaking about the fall and demise of this place, Babylon, in the last days, our deliverance based upon Revelation 6. It's going to be in the midst of hyperinflation. All right. All right, so I'm going to end it here. Uh, it's Isaiah 6 and 5, uh, 65, it says, and 11, But ye are they that forsake Yahweh, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that for furnish the drink offering unto that number. And that's Jake's, man, that have sold out to the society, that think this place is going to continue forever, that say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent them from their own wicked ways. <laughs> Um, so they, you know, they're working on the, working for the agenda of these devils on the left hand side. Therefore, will I number you to the sword, man? All right, for destruction to be destroyed. If you push to the left, the Lord gonna write their name in the book of death to be destroyed. And ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. See, they're gonna bow down and sell out. And Revelation 13 and 16, the MOTB, they're going to get it. All right. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. That's like when we out there teaching, you're speaking to, to Jake, and they don't want to hear it. All right. So they're going to eat the fruit of their own way. You know, caught out there thinking themselves to be in good case when they're not. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, behold, my servants shall eat. See, not all Israel. It ain't just about being an Israelite. It's about being the Lord's servant. All right, servant is worthy of his, of his pay. My servants shall drink, shall eat, but ye shall be hungry, man. The Lord gonna leave them out there and leave them hungry, but he gonna feed his servants. And we gotta have faith in that. Behold, my servants shall drink. See, we're gonna have fluids, all right? The body can't go past, usually past three days without some type of fluid in a survival situation. Even though our Lord proved that wrong, he, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. But ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed, man. So two-thirds of our people that didn't want to listen, they're going to get caught up and caught out there, man. They think of themselves in good, to be in good case. All right. But the Lord said, what? They're going to be thirsty, they're going to be hungry, and they're going to be ashamed. It says, Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, man, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart. So that's hell. That's that death and then hell followed. So the Lord going to let Jake get caught out there in the time of Jacob's trouble. And shall howl for vexation of spirit. It's going to be that bad. All right, so I'm going to end it there, man. Uh, all right, so yeah, man, Jake think themselves to be in good case. They're going to get caught out there. He says, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. But at the same time, Habakkuk 2 says, how long shall they increase that which is not his? So this place is increasing in dollars, and, and dollars is basically a measure of debt. So how are they going to they keep increasing in debt? So the more dollars created here in America is creating a debt and also hyperinflation. All right, and through hyperinflation, and through wars, and through sanctions, and through a, a, a crashing economy, and slowing down the spending, all these things cause hyperinflation, which hyperinflation and, and devaluation of a currency, 
ultimately bringing the demise of that country, crash of, the, of their currency, and also uh, famine. And through famine, you get what? Disease and also death. So hey, with that, I'm going to say uh, shalom.